Man, after watching that game again, here are some of my thoughts on that. We're going to start right off. Elvin Kamara. Man, what a game he had. Uh, finished with 10 catches, 179 yards, and a touchdown just as a receiver. And they double teamed this man. Basically, every passing down in the second half, he got double teamed. And rightfully so. He was the only threat for, I mean, a long time on offense. So Seahawks was like, you know what? Somebody else has to beat us. But Axe still got the job done. Played great. Probably his best game all year. Uh, definitely his best game out the backfield. If you watch my um, you know, my analysis on, on what I wanted to see before the game, getting the ball to Elvin Kamara, you know, that was that was a big thing. That was a super, super big thing for me. Obviously, if you watch Drew Brees toward, towards the latter stages of his career, he just threw the Elvin Kamara for the most part, man. And sometimes it works. He's that good. That's all you have to do sometimes. Uh, I know some of y'all disagreed when I did the Jameis Winston breakdown because I know some Jameis Winston's uh, – Supporters are a little crazy and he can do no wrong, but I always say it if Elvin Kamara is one on one, throw it every single time. I can't say it enough. If he's one on one with anybody on the field, you should look nowhere else. You're only looking at Elvin Kamara. Now, if he's doubled, different story, but if he's one on one, every single time, every single time I'm throwing to that man. Uh, also, that double team, it made me happy. I was waiting for someone to do it. They double teamed Elvin Kamara. But when MT comes back, you won't be able to do that. You put them on the same side, opposite sides. You can't double them both. It's just going to be impossible for you. So it did make me happy to see your team finally is going to double team Elvin Kamara, which just means our offense is going to get you know more crazier. And they wasn't hiding it. They just walk up to the line with two guys and be like, hey, two guys are on you inside, outside. Love to see that because it's going to just make the offense so much more better. And we got it on film. You know, we got the double team on film. Now they can go at it and see what they can do, you know, with the other guys to get them open and things like that. Also, we'll move to the receivers here. Marquez Callaway, he had a real good game. Don't let the stats fool you. My man was getting open uh, and things like that. Penalties hurt his stats. Definitely got, I think, a catch for like 20 yards call back. He got a couple batted balls, you know, uh, when the, the ball was getting thrown his way, batted down. He would have had easy catches and more for his down. So, hey, man, he got open enough, and we needed that. We needed that from him. Um, he looked definitely looked better than Traquan, um, but Traquan's first game, so can't really take too much, you know, into that. But on to Traquan, man. <sighs> what the hell he was doing? Was he doing out there? Can anyone tell me? Because I don't know. I have no idea what was going on. Him and Winston got into it. Winston got on his ass, which I love. Sean Payton loved, too. Everyone saw, like, Sean Payton was like, thank God. I didn't want to do it. They didn't love to see that from Winston. Uh, so everybody that was crying about Sean Payton getting on Winston, are y'all going to keep that same energy with Traquan and Went? Of course y'all not. Of course y'all won't because y'all are weird. Anyways, but yeah, man, I love to see that from Winston uh, getting on Traquan right there. And rightfully so. He was playing terrible. He wasn't even playing football. He was just out there. I don't know what he was out there doing. Just running around, getting cardio. He has one more week. He do that against the Bucks next week. I'll have some stronger words for him. First game, not going to kill him too much. But that was a shit show performance, and he can't he can't do that again. Uh, the other receivers, Kenny Stills, Kevin White, catch the damn ball. Well, Kenny Stills catch the ball. Already found out or realized that Kevin White just can't catch. He's not going to catch the ball. So, Kenny Stills, you have to catch the ball. Kevin White. I don't know, man. I don't know. You're too talented. You just can't catch. It is what it is, though. Next, man, that defense, as always, plays solid. Best thing about the team for another week was the defense, 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 defense. Uh, D-line played okay. Cameron Jordan got a sack, like I said last night. Clap it up for Cameron Jordan, y'all. Please clap it up for him. Marcus Davenport, I've seen enough. He's our best D-lineman. Maybe Anya Monica can come take that title from him. But until then, Davenport's our best D-lineman, man. It's not even close. It's honestly not close. That's why you don't look at stats, man. You see the stat sheet. You see Cameron Jordan got a sack. Davenport doesn't. You'll think Cam Jordan had a better game when it's, that was not the case. Davenport was everywhere, and we needed that. Uh, he got pressure, you know, on some occasions, played limited snaps. But good for him. Good for him because we need him to stay healthy, be on that field. And we need him to be our best lineman. 
We gave up two firsts for you, basically. A used one and gave up one. Yeah. You have to be our best D lineman. It just says what it is. Linebackers. Played great. As always. Warner, DeMario. I told y'all Warner was going to play over Quan. Some guys didn't believe me. Now you see it with your own eyes. I don't think that's going to change in any time unless an injury, you know, comes up. Knock on wood. Don't want that to happen. But I think that's Pete Warner's job, and I think he's earned it and deserved it. So we'll see We'll see what that uh, does. I'm sure Quan will get his snaps. He'll definitely get his snaps, but that's Pete Warner's job to lose. Secondary, quiet night for Marcus Williams. I mean, that's a good thing. The safety's not making a lot of plays. That's a good thing. You know, the plays aren't even getting to him. Uh... Lattimore, he pissed me off in the first half. I'm sure he pissed some of y'all off, too. Getting into it with Metcalf, man. Like I said, you letting a guy with blue hair get in your head. We just can't We can't have that. Can't have that at all. Gave up that one touchdown. A lot of people called it an offensive pass interference. Hey, man, the game is the game. You got to play through it. Uh, gave up that one catch, one touchdown. After that, didn't give up zilch, to be honest. Played a great game after that. So, just... Gotta let the game just be played, man. Don't get into all the extra, especially with Mike Evans coming up. It's going to be even more extra. So, hey, we'll see. Hopefully, he got it all out of his system. No, him and Mike Evans are best of friends. So, hey, we'll see We'll see what they do. Uh, only complaint I did have about Marcus Williams was he missed that tackle when Metcalf uh, scored on that touchdown. But, hey, after we won, thankfully he did because if he didn't, I lose my fantasy league, and uh, I appreciate you, Marcus Williams. But make that tackle next time, please. And on to special teams. Like I said, I watched this game again, man. Blake Gilligan, man, you're special. You're special. I knew he was special, honestly. Now I got to toot my own horn, but it was kind of obvious he was special. When the Saints cut Thomas Morstead, and they kept a punter, you know, on the practice squad all last season, I never mentioned it because, I mean, it's the punter on practice squad. So, it was just, like, weird because no one keeps an extra punter around. You know, you could just easily find a punter off the street and come punt. But to keep him on the practice squad, keep him in the, you know, the system, keep him around the team, he had to be special. And then to cut Thomas Morstead for this rookie punter that's never punted before, kid had to be special. And every week he showed up, he showed out, pinning guys inside the 20. He's changing field position. Every single time. I remember yesterday he punted like 45 yards, put him inside the 20. I was kind of upset. It's like, damn, that was a bad punt from him, which is insane. Insane to think about. He's, I mean, he's been a top five player for us this year. And last but not least, he wasn't the MVP, but I'm giving him the MVP anyway. He can get the MVP. He can shut up war with Demario and Ack. Brian Johnson wasn't asked to do a lot. It was short chip shot field goals. But he came in, he made his field goals, he made his extra point. Now Lutz doesn't have to try to rush back, you know, from this core injury, which you need to kick. Well, what you need to do, everything. Looks like we got a solid, solid kicker in tough conditions as well. What's in easy conditions? So, we'll see. We'll see what he does next week if he's playing against Tampa. And, well, I can't wait to get started on this Tampa week. This will probably be my last, you know, discussion on Seattle until that film drops. Then we'll look at that. But I won't talk about it no more because I'm on to Tampa and I can't wait. It's the boot tragedies.